Good morrow, scholars. Welcome again to Breaking Dawn. I assume I can be heard, because, yeah. Okay, this is for you. Uh, we are in Chapter 6, Distractions, page 99. I think. Yeah. Yeah. My entertainment became the number one priority on Isle Esme. We snorkeled. Well, I snorkeled. Well, he flaunted his ability to go without oxygen indefinitely. We explored the small jungle that ringed, yeah, the rocky little peak. We visited the parrots that lived in the canopy on the south end of the island. We watched the sunset from the rocky western cove. We swam with the porpoises that played in the warm, shallow waters there. Or at least I did. When Edward was in the water, the porpoises disappeared as if a shark was near. I knew what was going on. He was trying to keep me busy, distracted, so I wouldn't uh, continue badgering him about the... Never mind. Whenever I tried to talk to him into taking it easy with one of the million DVDs under the big screen plasma TV, he would lure me out of the house with the magic words like coral reefs and submerged caves and sea turtles. <gasps> I would love to meet a sea turtle. We were going, going, going all day, so that I found myself completely famished and exhausted when the sun eventually set. I drooped over my plate after I finished dinner every night. Once I'd actually fallen asleep right, in, right at the table and he had to carry me to bed. Part of it was that Edward always made too much food for one, but I was so hungry after swimming and climbing all day that I ate most of it. Then full and worn out, I could barely keep my eyes open. All part of the plan, no doubt. Exhaustion, exhaustion didn't help much with my attempts at persuasion, but I didn't give up. I tried reasoning, pleading, and grouching, all to no avail. I usually was, I was usually unconscious before I could really press my case far, and then my dreams felt so real, nightmares mostly, made more vivid, I guessed, by the two bright colors of the island, that I woke up tired no matter how long I slept. About a week or so after we'd gotten to the island, I decided to try my, uh, to try compromise. It had worked for us in the past. I was sleeping in the blue room now. The cleaning crew wasn't due until the next day, so the white room still had a snowy blanket of down. The blue room was smaller, the bed more reasonably proportioned. Proportioned, yeah. The walls were dark paneled, uh, were dark paneled in teak, and the fittings were all luxurious blue silk. I'd taken to wearing some of Alice's lingerie collection to sleep at night, which weren't so revealing compared to the scanty bikini she'd packed for me when it came right down to it. What? I wondered if she'd had a vision of why I would want such things, and then shuddered, embarrassed by that thought. I'd started out slow with innocent ivory sateens. What? Not, not, not what I just read, but before that, what the hey? Or was I? Worried that revealing more of my skin would be the opposite of el helpful, but ready to try anything. Edward seemed to notice nothing, as if I were wearing the same ratty old sweats I wore at home. The bruises were much better now, yellowing in some places, ugh, and disappearing altogether in others. So tonight I pulled out one of the scarier pieces as I got ready in the paneled bathroom. It was black, lacy, and embarrassing to look at even when it wasn't on. What? Oh. I was careful not to look in the mirror before I went back to the bedroom. I didn't want to lose my nerve. I had the satisfaction of watching his eyes pop open wide for just a second before he controlled his expression. What do you think? I asked, uh, pirouetting. That's how you spell it. So that he could see every angle, what? He cleared his throat. You look beautiful. You always do. Thanks, I said a bit sourly. I was too tired to resist climbing quickly into the soft bed. He put his arms around me and pulled me against his chest, but this was routine. It was too hot to sleep without his cool body close. I'll make you a deal, I said sleepily. I will not make any deals with you, he answered. You haven't even heard what I'm offering. It doesn't matter. I'm... what? I sighed, dang it. And I really wanted... oh well. He pulled his eyes. What? Oh, okay. I closed mine and let the bait sit there. I yawned. It took only a minute, not long enough for me to zonk out. 
All right. What is it you want? I gritted my teeth for a second, fighting a smile. If there was one thing he couldn't resist, it was an opportunity to give me something. Well, I was thinking. I know that the whole Dartmouth thing was just supposed to be a cover story, but honestly, one semester of college probably wouldn't kill me. I said, echoing his words from long ago, when he tried to persuade me to put off becoming a vampire. Charlie would get a thrill out of Dartmouth stories, I bet. Sure, it might be embarrassing if I can't keep up with all the brainiacs, still. 18, 19, it's not really a big difference. It's not like I'm going to get crow's feet in the next year. He was silent for a long moment, then in a low voice he said, You would wait. You would stay human. I like that band. Why are you doing th uh, what? Oh, I held my tongue, letting the offer sink in. Why are you doing this to me? He said through his teeth, his tone suddenly angry. Isn't it hard enough without all of this? He grabbed a handful of lace that was ruffled on my thigh. What? For a moment, I thought he was going to rip it from the seam. Then his hand relaxed. It doesn't matter. I won't make any deals with you. I want to go to college. No, you don't. What? And there is nothing that is worth risking your life again. That's worth hurting you. But I do want to go. Well, it's not college so much as it, um, it's not college as much as it's that I want, I want to be human a little while longer. He closed his eyes and exhaled through his nose. You were making me insane, Bella. You, we ha haven't we had this argument a million times? You always begging to be a vampire without delay. Yes, but well, I have a reason to be human that I didn't have before. What's that? Yes, I said, and I dragged myself off the pillows to kiss him. He kissed me back, but not in a way that made me think I was winning. It was more like he was being careful not to hurt my feelings. He was completely, maddeningly, in control of himself. Gently, he pulled away, or pulled me away after a moment and cradled me against his chest. You are so human, Bella, ruled by your hormones, he chuckled. That's the whole point, Edward. I like this part of being human. I don't want to give it up yet. I don't want to wait through years of being a blood-crazed newborn for some part of this to come back to me. I yawned and he smiled. You're tired. Sleep, love. What? He started humming the lullaby he'd composed for me when we first met. Wait. First met in the classroom or first... never mind. I wonder why I'm so tired, I muttered sarcastically. That couldn't be part of your scheme or anything. He chuckled once and went back to humming. For as tired as I've been, you'd think I'd sleep better. The song broke off. You've been sleeping like the dead, Bella. You haven't said a word in your sleep since we got here. If I weren't for the snoring, I'd worry you were slipping into a coma. Let's see. I ignored the snoring j uh, jibe. Jibe? Jab? It says jibe, but I'm gonna say jab. Jib, maybe? No, that doesn't sound right. Let's see. I haven't been tossing? That's weird. Usually I'm all over the bed when I'm having nightmares and shouting. You've been having nightmares? Vivid ones. They make me so tired, I yawned. I can't believe I haven't been babbling about them all night. Hmm. What are they about? Different things, but the same. You know, because of the colors. Colors? It's also bright and real. Usually, when I'm dreaming, I know that I am. With these, I don't know I'm asleep. It makes them scarier. He sounded disturbed when he spoke again. What is frightening you? I shuddered slightly. Mostly, I hesitated. Mostly, he prompted. I wasn't sure why, but I didn't want to tell him about the child in my re recurring nightmare. There was something private about that particular horror, so instead of giving him the full description, I just uh, I gave him just one element, certainly enough to frighten me or anyone else. The Volturi. I whispered. He hugged me tighter. They aren't going to bother us anymore. You'll be immortal soon, and they'll have no reason. I let him comfort me, feeling a little guilty that he'd misunderstood. The nightmares weren't like that, exactly. I wasn't afraid for myself. I was afraid for the boy. He wasn't the same boy as that first dream, the vampire child with the blood-red eyes who sat on a pile of dead people I loved. This boy I dreamed of four times in the last week was definitely human. His cheeks were flushed and his white eyes were a soft green. 
But just like the like the other child, he shook with fear and desperation as the Volturi closed in on us. In his dream, he uh, that was both new and old, I simply had to protect protect the unknown child. There was no other option. At the same time, I knew I would fail. He saw the desolation on my face. What can I do to help? I shook it off. They're just dreams, Edward. Do you want me to sing to you? I'll sing all night if it will keep the bad dreams away. They're not all bad. Some are nice. So colorful, underwater, with the fish and the coral. It all seems like it's really happening. I don't know that I'm dreaming. Maybe the island is the problem. It's really bright here. Do you want to go home? No. No, not yet. Can't we stay a, l a while longer? Hmm. We can stay as long as you want, Bella, he promised me. When does the semester start? I wasn't paying attention before. He sighed. He may have started humming again, too, but I was under before I could be sure. Later, when I awoke in the dark, it was with shock. The dream had been so very real, so vivid, so sensory. I gasped aloud, and now disoriented by the dark room. Only a second ago, it seemed I had been under the brilliant sun. Bella, Edward whispered, his uh, arms tied around me, shaking me gently. Are you all right, sweetheart? Oh, I gasped again. Just a dream, not real. To my utter astonishment, tears overflowed uh, from my eyes without warning, gushing down my face. Bella, he said, louder, alarmed now. What's wrong? He wiped the tears from my hot cheeks with cold, frantic fingers, but others followed. It was only a dream. I couldn't contain the low sob that broke in my voice. I would try, but I'm not really good at that. The senseless tears were disturbing, but I couldn't get control of the staggering grief that gripped me. I wanted so badly for the dream to be real. What? It's okay, love. You're fine. I'm here. He rocked me back and forth a little too fast to soothe. <laughs> Did you have another nightmare? It wasn't real. It wasn't real. Not a nightmare. I shook my head, scrubbing the back of my hand against my eyes. It was a good dream. My voice broke again. Then why are you crying? He asked, bewildered. See what I mean? Because I woke up, I wailed, wrapping my arms around his neck in a chokehold and sobbing into his throat. Where was I? He laughed once at my logic, but the sound was tense with concern. Get off of me. Everything's all right, Bella. Take deep breaths. It was so real, I cried. I wanted it to be real. Tell me about it, he urged. Maybe that will help. We were on the beach. I trailed off, pulling back to the... Pulling back to look at, with tear-filled eyes at his anxious angel's face. Dim in the darkness, I stared at him broodingly as the unreasonable grief began to ebb. And... He finally prompted. I've linked the tears out of my eyes, torn. Oh, Edward... Tell me, Bella, is it, uh, he pleaded, eyes wild with worry at the pain in my voice, but I couldn't. Instead, I clutched my arms around his neck again and locked my mouth with his feverishly. What? It wasn't desire at all. It was need, acute to the point of pain. His response was instant, but quickly followed uh, by his rebuff. He struggled with me as gently as he could in his surprise. What? He struggled with me? Yeah, okay. Holding me away, grasping, grasping my shoulders. I really do need to do um, breathing exercises. Remind me. Where was I? No, Bella, he insisted, looking at me as if he was worried that I'd lost my mind. My arms dropped, defeated, the bizarre tears spilling in a fresh torrent down my face, a new sob rising in my throat. He was right, I must be crazy. He stared at me with confused, anguished eyes. What the heck? I'm sorry, I mumbled. I'm going to try not to stutter, so I don't want to read when someone stutters. because I am afraid of it coming back. Well, I'm not afraid of it coming back so much as uh, it's taken me a long time to get over it. I don't know. But he pulled me to him then, hugging me tightly to his marble chest. I can't, Bella. I can't. His moan was agonized. 
please, I said, my plea muffled against his skin. Please, Edward. I couldn't tell if he was moved by the tears trembling in my voice, or if he was unprepared to deal with the suddenness of my attack, or if his need was simply un as unbearable in that moment as my own. But whatever the reason, he pulled my lips back to his, surrendering with a groan, and we began where my dream had left off. Can I go feed the turtles? I stayed very still when I woke up in the morning and tried to keep my breathing even. I was afraid to open my eyes. I was laying across uh, Edward's chest, but he was very still and his arms were not wrapped around me. That was a bad sign. I was afraid to admit I was awake and face his anger, no matter whom it was directed at today. Carefully, I peeked through my eyelashes. He was staring up at the dark ceiling, his arms behind his head. I pulled myself up on my elbow so that I could see his face better. It was smooth, expressionless. How much trouble am I in? I asked, asked in a small voice. Dang it. Heaps, he said, but turned his head and smirked at me. I breathed a sigh of relief. I am sorry, I said. I didn't mean... Well, I don't know exactly what that was last night. I shook my head at the memory of the irrational tears, the crushing grief. You never did tell me what your dream was about. I guess I didn't, but I sort of showed you what it was about. I, na I laughed nervously. There we go. Oh, he said. His eyes widened, and then he blinked. Interesting. It was a very good dream, I murmured. Dang it. He didn't comment, so after a few seconds uh, later I asked, Am I forgiven? I'm thinking about it. I sat up, planning to examine myself. There didn't seem to be any feathers, at least. But as I moved, an odd wave of vertigo hit again. I swayed and fell back against the pillows. Whoa. Head rush. Whoa. What? What? Hey. I don't know what it is, but when you're having a conversation with someone and then you all of a sudden start drinking from a gallon of water, it makes everyone feel uncomfortable. Where was I? His arms were around me then. You slept for a long time. Twelve hours. Twelve? How strange. I gave myself a quick once-over while I spoke, trying to be inconspicuous about it. I looked fine. The bruises on my arms were still a week old, yellowing. I stretched experimentally. I felt fine, too. Well, better than fine, actually. Is the inventory complete? I nodded uh, sheepishly. <clears throat> my chest. The pillows appear to have survived. Unfortunately, I can't say the same for your or n nightgown. He nodded toward the foot of the bed, where several scraps of black lace were strewn across the silk sheets. That's too bad, I said. I liked that one. I did, too. Were there any other casualties? I asked, timidly. I'll have to buy Esme a new bed frame. Why? He confessed, glancing over his shoulder. I followed his gaze and was shocked to see that large chunks of wood had apparently been gouged from the left side of the headboard. Hmm, I frowned. You'd think I would uh, I would have heard that. You seem to be extraordinarily unobservant when your attention is otherwise involved. What? I was a bit absorbed, I admitted, blushing a deep red. He touched my burning cheek inside. I'm really going to miss that. I stared at his face, searching for any signs of the anger or remor remorse I feared. His gaze back at me. Uh, he gazed back at me evenly. There we go. His expression calm but otherwise unreadable. How are you feeling? He laughed. What? I demanded. You look so guilty, like you've committed a crime. I feel guilty, I muttered. So you seduced your all too willing husband. That's not a capital offense. He seemed to be teasing. My cheeks got hotter. The word seduced implies a certain amount of premeditation. Maybe that was a wrong word, he allowed. Ow. You're not angry? He smiled ruefully. I'm not angry. Why not? Well, he paused. I didn't hurt you, for one thing. It was easier this time, to control myself. To channel the excesses. 
His eyes flickered uh, to the damaged frame again, maybe because I had a better idea of what to expect. A hopeful smile started to spread across my face. I told you that it was all about practice. He rolled his eyes. My stomach growled and he laughed. For breakfast time for the human, he asked. Please, I said, hopping out of bed. I moved too quickly, though, and had to stagger drunkenly to regain my balance. He caught me before I could stumble into the dresser. I probably would have. Are you alright? If I don't have a better sense of equilibrium in my next life, I'm demanding a refund. I cooked this morning, frying up some eggs, too hungry to do anything more elaborate. Impatient, I flipped them onto a plate after just a few minutes. Since when do you eat eggs, sunny side up, he asked. Since now. Do you know how many eggs you've gone through in the last week? He pulled the trash bin out from under the sink. It was full of empty blue cartons. Weird, I said after swallowing a scorching bite. This place is messing with my appetite. And my dreams, and my already dubious balance. But I like it here. We'll probably have to leave soon, don't, though, don't we? Won't we, rather. To make it to Dartmouth in time? Well, I guess I need to find a place to live and stuff, too. He sat down next to me. You can give up. Uh, you can give up the college pretense now. You've gotten what you wanted, and we didn't agree to a deal, so there are no strings attached. I snorted. It wasn't a pretense, Edward. I don't spend my free time plotting like some people do. I do. What can we do to wear Bella out today? I said in a poor impression of his voice. He laughed unashamed. I really do want a little more time being human. I leaned over uh, to run my hand across his bare chest. I've not had enough. What? He gave me a dubious look. For this? He asked, catching my hand as I moved down to his thumb. Oh no. This was the key all along? He rolled his eyes. Why didn't I think of that? He muttered sarcastically. I could have saved myself a lot of arguments. I laughed. Yeah, probably. You are so human, he said again. I know. A hint of a smile pulled at his lips. We're going to Dartmouth, really? I'll probably fail out in one semester. I'll tutor, tutor you. There we go. His smile was wide now. You're going to love college. Do you think... Quiet phone. Do you think we can find an apartment this late? He grimaced, looking guilty. Well, we sort of already have a house there, you know, just in case. You bought a house? Real estate is a good investment. I raised one eyebrow and then let it go. So we're ready then. I'll, s I'll have to see if we can keep your before car a little longer. Yes, heaven forbid I am I not be protected from tanks. He grinned. H How much longer can we stay? I asked. We're fine on time. A few more weeks if you want. And then we can visit Charlie before you go to New Hampshire. We could spend Christmas with Renee. <laughs> His words painted a very Im happy immediate future, one free of pain for everyone involved. The Jacob drawer, all but forgotten, rattled, and I amended the thought for almost everyone. This wasn't getting any easier, now that I'd discovered exactly how good being human could be. It was tempting to let my plans drift. Eighteen or, 18 or 19, 19 or 20, did it really matter? I wouldn't change so much in a year, and being human with Edward, the choice got trickier every day. A few weeks, I agreed, and then because there never seemed to be enough time, I added, so I was thinking, you know, what I was saying before about practice? He laughed. Can you hold on to that thought? I hear a boat. The cleaning crew must be here. He wanted me to hold on to that thought. So did that mean he was not going to give me any more trouble about practicing? I smiled. I didn't. Let me explain the mess in the white room to Gustavo. What is... it's always... never mind. And then we can go out. There's a place in the jungle on the south. I don't want to go out. I'm not hiking all over the island today. I want to stay here and watch a movie. He pursed his lips, trying not to laugh at my disgruntled tone. All right, whatever you'd like. Why don't you pick out one while I get the door? I didn't hear a knock. What? He cocked his head to the side, listening. A half second later, a faint, timid rap on the door sounded. He grinned and turned for the hallway. I wandered over to the shelves under the big TV and started scanning through the titles. It was hard to decide where to begin. They had more DVDs than a rental store. I could hear Edward's low, velvet voice as he came back down the hall, conversing fluidly in what I assumed was perfect Portuguese. Another harsher human voice answered in the same tongue. Edward led them into the room, pointing toward the kitchen on his way. 
The two Brazilians looked incredibly short and dark next to him. One was a round man, the other a slight female, both their faces creased with lines. Edward gestured to me with a proud smile, and I heard uh, my name mixed in with a flurry of unfamiliar words. I flushed a little as I thought of the downy mess in the white room which they would soon encounter. The little man smiled at me politely. But the tiny, coffee-skinned woman didn't smile. She stared at me with a mixture of shock, worry, and most of all, wide-eyed fear. Before I could react, Edward motioned for them to follow him toward the um, chicken coop, there we go, and they were gone. When he reappeared, he was alone. He walked swiftly to my side and wrapped his arms around me. What's with her? I whispered, urgently remembering her panic expression. He shrugged, unperturbed. Kare, I'm guessing, I don't know. His part... Uh, not sure how I want to pronounce that. Tycuna Indian. She was raised to be more superstitious. Or you could call it more aware than those who live in the modern world. She suspects what I am, or close enough. He still didn't sound worried. They have their own legends here. The Libishomen, a blood-drinking demon who preys exclusively on beautiful women. Look it up. That's actually a werewolf legend down in that area. Very little to do with what she says it is in this book. I like... I like mythological creatures of all kinds, and I do a lot of reading on such things. Ah, uh, ooh. That might be a fun little series. <gasps> I think I know what I want to do. Y you guys remember that book I be I've been working on? Uh, Miga and I, we've been working on it. Uh, it could be an anthology series, and each chapter is a different uh, self-contained story, all taking place in a, the same universe. I could use mythological creatures for each individual one. But we'll stay away from werewolves and vampires because I feel they're overdone, and zombies, I think, are just about played out. Even though I love The Walking Dead. Anyway. Beautiful woman only. Well, that was kind of flattering. She looked terrified, I said. She is, but mostly she's worried about you. Me? She's afraid of why I have you here, all alone. He chuckled darkly and then looked toward the wall of movies. Oh well, why don't you choose something for us to watch? That's an acceptably human thing to do. Yes, I'm sure a movie will convince her that you're human. I laughed and clasped my arms around... Uh, uh, wait, what? My arms securely around his neck, stretching up on my tiptoes. He leaned down so that I could kiss him, and then his arms tightened around me, lifting me off the floor so he didn't have to bend. Movie schmovie, I muttered, as his lips moved down my throat, <laughs> twisting my fingers in his bronze hair. What? Then I heard a gasp, and he put me down abruptly. How did he not hear her coming? Anyway, Kare stood frozen in the hallway, feathers in her black hair, a large sack of more feathers in her arms, an expression of horror on her face. She stared at me, her eyes bugging out as I blushed and looked down, and then she recovered herself and murmured something that, even in an unfamiliar language, was clearly an apology. Edward smiled and answered in a friendly tone. She turned her dark eyes away and con continued down the hall. She was thinking what I think she was thinking, wasn't she? He laughed at my convoluted sentence. Yes. Here, I said, reaching out at random and grabbing a movie. Put this on and we can pretend to watch it. It was an old musical with smiling faces and fluffy dresses on the front. Very honeymoonish, Edward approved. While actors on the screen danced their way through a perky introduction song, I l lolled on the sofa, snuggled into Edward's arms. Will we move back into the white room now? I wondered what, idly. I don't know. I've already mangled the headboard in the other room beyond repair. Maybe if we limit the destruction to one area of the house, Esme might invite us back someday. You never know. I smiled widely, so there will be more destruction. He laughed at my expression. Oh, jeez. I think it might be safer if it's premeditated rather than if I wait for you to assault me again. 
It would only be a matter of time, I agreed casually, but my pulse was racing in my veins. Is there something the matter with your heart? Nope. Healthy as a horse, I paused. Did you want me, uh, want to go survey the demolition zone now? Maybe it would be more polite to wait until we're alone. You may not notice me tearing the furniture apart, but it would probably scare them. In truth, I'd already forgotten the people in the other room. Right. Drat. I used to say drat all the time. Gustavo and Corre moved quietly through the house while I waited patiently for them to finish and tried to pay attention to the happily ever after on the screen. I was starting to get sleepy, though. According to Edward, I'd slept half the day when a rough voice startled me. Edward sat up, keeping me cradled against him, and answered Gustavo in flowing Portuguese. Gustavo nodded and walked quietly toward the front door. They're finished, Edward told me. So that would mean we're alone now? How about lunch first, he suggested. I bit my lip, torn by the dilemma. I was pretty hungry. With a smile, he took my hand and led me to the kitchen. He knew my face so well, it didn't matter that he couldn't read my mind. This is getting out of hand, I complained when I felt finally felt full. Do you want to swim with the dolphins this afternoon? Burn off the calories, he asked. Maybe later. I had another idea for burning calories. Oh, jeez. And what was that? Well, there's an awful lot of headboard left. But I didn't finish. He'd already swept me on to... Uh, up into his arms, and his lips silenced mine as he carried me with inhuman speed to the blue room. Okay, that was chapter six. Thank you guys for watching. Um, I don't know what it is, but YouTube's been having a hard time, or I'm having a hard time uh, with YouTube and uploading the videos. So this one's probably going to be a little late, even though I got the other one kind of early, and then somehow this one ends up being at the normal time but you know that's two and I guess now I've got like two hours to kill I don't know I'm probably just gonna work out though after I feed the turtles and feed Iggy isn't that right Iggy he's kinda mad at me right now anyway I forgot about the link to my Twitter in the last video so I might put it in this one um someone remind me in case I don't and until next time goodbye everybody